everybody, Frank Chen here with REIClub.com, your link to creative real estate. Today, I got a quick new video for you covering some of the pros and cons of investing in real estate investment trust. Now, like in all my videos, everything I talk about, I include in the description below. Simply click show more and you can follow right along. So let's go ahead and get started. A REIT or a real estate investment trust is a simply a company that owns and or manages or finances income producing real estate and provides investors the opportunity to really diversify their income and really gain long term uh, capital appreciation. Now, like mutual funds, REITs allow anyone to invest in portfolios of large-scale properties the same way they invest in, say, other industries through the purchase of stock. Now, there are two main types of REITs that you need to be aware of. One is the equity REIT, and the other one is a mortgage REIT. Now, equity REITs generate income through the uh, collections of rent or monthly rent and the, from the sale of the physical property. Now, mortgage REITs, uh, they invest in the mortgage and mortgage securities tied to properties, and then you share in the interest attached to those securities. So those are the main differences. Now, let's go ahead and dive into some of the advantages and disadvantages. Unlike other forms of real estate investing, uh, you can invest in REITs using mutual funds. Their minimums are generally lower than most down payments on a home, which allows you to diversify your portfolio across multiple REITs. Some as low as $5,000 all the way up to maybe $10,000. But the idea here is by diversifying your portfolio, you're creating multiple streams of income. Also, REITs are on the secondary market, which makes it easy to uh, liquefy your shares. So instead of actually having to sell a physical home or property, all you have to do is get rid of your shares to get out of the deal. And stock exchange listed REITs, shares can easily be bought and sold. Now, you can also own one of the other advantages of, of being a part of a REIT is that you own real estate uh, without the costs and hassles that are associated with owning. Uh, another thing is that you own a physical asset uh, with a value that's historically known to increase over a long-term period. Again, when you invest in a REIT, it's a long-term investment, not one of those short-term goals. Also, REITs have a, pay, um, have a payout structure of 90% of their profits, which are distributed by as dividends to their shareholders. So that means more profits to you. Now let's talk about some of the disadvantages. Now since REITs are paying out 90% of their profits and only keeping 10%, that means their growth is going to be generally slower than other types of funds. Now there are also other variables that are going to influence the share amount. Basically if there's any increase in property tax, falling occupancy rates, um, these will affect your revenues and in return hurt your shares. Also, REITs are affected by any type of interest rate changes that happen, that happen generally annually. When interest rates go up, shares go down. Interest rates go down, shares go up. There's an indirect relationship there, so it's important for you to stay on track with what's going on in those areas. Also, REITs are a pass-through um, entity, meaning they pass their taxes on to their shareholders. So although they're paying out 90% of their dividends, their shareholders are the ones responsible to pay the taxes on that because for some REITs, those are considered personal income. And for my control freaks out there, if you're all about understanding where the money is going and you wanna be in control of the allocation of funds, then a REIT's not gonna be a good fit because again, it's only a capital investment. You have no say in the operational decisions. In conclusion, you know, REITs are a good investment, but for those investors that may not have a lot of time to do all the research or take care of a physical property, but want the benefits of all the profits that real estate has to offer. Now, again, you're not taking any ownership, no tenants, no toilets, no trash. This is purely one of those capital investments. But is there a risk? Of course there is, but it's minimized due to the secondary market and how quickly you're able to liquefy your shares. And of course, there, your ability to track your funds on a daily and monthly basis allows you to better determine what to do with your money, say, if it's not going in the direction that you like. But in that sense, you do have control. Now, the only way you only, one of the only ways you lose money is if you sell your shares at a loss. But if you're holding on to your shares for a long period of time, 10, 15, 20 years, you're going to see a fluctuation in the market, increases and decreases. But ultimately, as the stock market has always proved in the past, it's known to bounce back. 
Now again, guys, this is Frank Chin with REIClub.com. Do us a favor, if you haven't already, go ahead and uh, sign up for our newsletter so we can keep you informed of what's new in real estate around your neck of the woods. And if you enjoyed the video, do us a favor and go ahead and like the video because it really does help us out. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. And if you're one of my newcomers, be sure to check out one of our videos um, from about the past weeks. I really appreciate you guys' support. We look forward to talking to you guys next time. And again, take care, good investing, and bye-bye.